Let's burn hot and bright and eat some delicious cauliflower and see how you can add a custom food and fuel item to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found us back in the once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding both a custom fuel item as well as a custom food item to Minecraft. The names are very closely related. However, the way that they are added is actually quite a bit different. But I thought, what the heck, let's just do them both at the same time over here. As always, of course, there are going to be timestamps for the video. So you know, if you only want to do the food item, you can jump to that. And if you only want to do the fuel item, you can also do that. Now, first and foremost, we're going to start with the food item. For a food item, before we even add the custom item, we actually need to add the component, the food component that actually makes up the food. For this, we're going to go into the item package and we're going to right click new Java class called the mod food components class. There we go. And this is going to have a new food component. So we're going to have a public static final food component, making sure we choose food component over here and then just tap to auto complete it. And this is going to be the component for the cauliflower. And it's going to be a new food component. And we're going to delete the parentheses that builder because we're going to actually make a new food component builder. And here we can add certain things like, hey, is this a snack? If you add the snack method, for example, you can eat it very fast, right? But we want to do the nutrition over here. Let's do a three and then a saturation modifier of, let's say, two, uh, 0 0.25 F. And then we can even do a status effect. So if you eat this, there is a chance that you get a new status effect instance applied to you for the status effects dot. Let's say maybe you get mm, a health boost. Why not? Cauliflower is quite good for like 200 ticks. And the chance is, let's say, 15% here in this case. And then we at the end here, want to end with a dot build and then you're good to go. You can also check out the food components class. So simply press shift twice and we're going to put in a food components. There you go. Include non-project items. And we can take a look at the food components class over here. And there you can see the food components and each of the different, well, basically builders for each of the different components, right? So chicken, for example, as you can see, has a status effect as well where you can get the hunger effect for 600 ticks and there is a 30% chance of it. I still think that there's something going on with this. I feel like this is way more. But whatever the case may be, this is how it's basically built. And therefore, you can then sort of balance your own custom foods by looking at those. If you want to make a drink instead of a food, that is totally fine. But you will need for your custom food to be a drink. You need to make a custom item class for it. And then in that item class, I'm just going to type this out just so that you've seen this before. You want to overwrite the get use action method right here and return the use action of a drink in this case. And there we go. That's literally the only thing you need to do. But if you do want to have a drink, then you need to make a custom item class with that and then you're good to go. The rest of this basically stays the same. Then you simply want to go to the mod items class and actually register that item. So we're going to have a public static final and it's going to be an item here. I'm going to call this the cauliflower equal to the register item method. There's going to be the cauliflower. There you go. And there's going to be a new item in this case where we'll make new item dot settings. And here we simply call the dot food method and add mod food components dot cauliflower and we can end it with a semicolon and there you go. Of course, if you make the custom item class for your custom drink, right? Let's say, for example, you call it a drink item, then you would literally just replace the new item here with the new drink item and then you'd be good to go. But that is the cauliflower added. Let's add it to the item group here as well. That's going to be the cauliflower and then all of the craziness when it comes to, uh, well, the translation and the textures and all of that as well, of course. Translation should be nothing too crazy over here. And then when it comes to the item model JSON file, well, let's just take one of the other item model JSON files, making sure if you actually do this to actually use a proper item model JSON file and not the item model JSON file of a block, for example, because that would have obviously will not work. But there you go, right? Just the cauliflower JSON over here and then the texture, which is also going to be available to you as well. So we're going to add the cauliflower texture right here. There we go. That's going to be the cauliflower texture. And with all of those steps done, what we can do is we can jump into the game and actually eat our cauliflower for the first time. So let's see. All right, finally back in Minecraft. As you can see, the cauliflower has been successfully added to the game. And if I, well, eat one, let's take a look. And you can see 
we get one and a half hunger bars over here restored. We can get another one over here. There you go. And I even got the health boost, the 15% health boost. That is pretty nice. But yeah, that is the food item. So now let's get hot by adding a fuel item as well. And when it comes to the fuel item, it is actually super simple. You basically simply want a, another item that you're actually going to use as a fuel item. That's going to be for us the Starlight Ashes. I thought, you know, going a little bit of a fantasy theme here could be kind of cool. Of course, equal to the register item method. I'm going to call this Starlight underscore Ashes equal to, and there's going to be crazy a new item with new item settings with literally nothing else. This is all we need for our custom fuel item because the way that the custom fuel item is defined is by, well, going to the tutorial mode class over here and we're going to call the fuel registry method right here from net fabric MC fabric API registry. And we're going to call the dot instance and then we're going to add mod items dot starlight ashes and then whatever the value is that you want this to burn for. If you wanted to find the vanilla values for certain fuels, then just simply shift, hit shift twice. And we're going to look at the abstract furnace block entity, I wanted to say. I'm pretty sure it's in there. Let's take a look. Let's just disregard everything else except for the create fuel time map method right here. And you can see there they are. So this is, of course, in ticks, right? So the integer here denotes the number of ticks that this is going to burn for highly recommended to take a look at this and then you basically know all right this is going to be how long the burn times are and once again you can balance that respectively with your own custom fuels and if you don't want this to you know if you have like 80 different fuels just for the sake of argument obviously highly recommended to then either make a custom class to register them and simply add those to a static method and then call it in the on initialize method you know or just you know basically clean this up a little bit instead of just calling every one of those instances inside of the on initialize method that's just a personal preference you don't have to do that i was just it's just sort of an idea that could be pretty good let's also add it to the creative mode tab over here that's going to be our starlight ashes over there there you go then a translation and of course for the starlight ashes the same item model json file over here pointing to the starlight ashes texture which will also copy over and of course as always which will also be available to you down below as is going to be all of the rest of the code as well but with that done let's actually burn some starlight ashes and see them in the furnace for the first time all right, fangos, we're back in Minecraft. As you can see, the Starlight Ashes have been added to the game. And if I were to put in some Deep Slate Iron Ore, you can see they are going to burn here. And the same thing goes for the Blast Furnace. It will also work in the Smoker. That is not an issue at all. So basically, all of the different ones that are basically needing any type of fuel, you can see they're all going to work in those. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is how easy it can be to add a custom fuel to Minecraft as well. Awesome. And that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about custom tooltips. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.